Can the power of thought alone create something? Can you think something into existence? These are just a few questions I want to cover today when we talk about the Philip experiment from 1972. It's an experiment that's been in the back of my mind for quite some time. It begins with the thought, pun intended, that I posed at the beginning. The thought that something or someone can be manifested just by thought alone. This idea is more commonly known as a tulpa and has ties to Tibetan Buddhism. It was their belief that one could create a second consciousness in their head, one that had different thoughts, opinions, and beliefs from their own. Something that could give them a second look at things. This was only in the mind, though. The Philip experiment planned to take this to a new level. The man who proposed the idea in the first place was a mathematician, A.R.G. Owen. He's also an author with various books about cases in the paranormal realm, most of which take place in Canada. The entire experiment was overseen by a psychologist from the University of Toronto, Joel Witten. The experiment itself was rather simple. Owen, Joel, and a handful of other participants, whom we'll touch on soon, would create a fictional character and attempt to bring them into existence in various ways. The group, including Owen and Joel, consisted of eight individuals. Iris Owen, Margaret Sparrows, a former chairperson for the Mensa in Canada, an industrial engineer, Andy H., and his wife, Lorne. It also included a heating engineer, Al Peacock, and an accountant named Bernice M., a bookkeeper named Dorothy O'Donnell, and a sociology student named Sidney K. The belief was that this group could bring a totally fictional person into reality. So, who were they trying to manifest? The name they eventually landed on was Philip Aylesford. His name and history were completely made up by the group. It began in the mid-1600s. Philip was a Catholic Englishman aristocrat who was an incredibly well-off man at Diddington Manor. He was married to a woman named Dorothy, described as beautiful, but cold. She was the daughter of a nobleman, but their marriage was not perfect. The story goes on to say, Philip, while out riding, came across a gypsy encampment and met a woman named Margot. The two fell in love, and soon Philip began having an affair. He even invited Margot back to his home where she stayed in the gatehouse, away from the prying eyes of Philip's wife. The arrangement only lasted a short time, though, as Dorothy discovered Margot and subsequently accused her of witchcraft to seduce her husband. Philip, unsure of what to do, said nothing, and Margot was burned at the stake for practicing witchcraft. Not long after Margot had been killed, Philip took his own life. They said he was unable to handle the grief and guilt knowing Margot had her life taken because he had simply stayed quiet. It began with group meditation. Everyone would envision Philip in their heads, imagine him being there in hopes of him manifesting before them. The group had no success. They concluded that there would be no developments in this experiment if they continued this way. And so, following the suggestion from Kenneth J. Barchlador, a psychologist, they moved to try seances. It was here that things took a turn in the direction that they were hoping. The group went through with a traditional seance, sitting at a round table, dimming the lights, and putting up drawings of Philip, as well as photos of castles they believed were similar to the one they'd visualized. In September of 1972, when the group gathered around the table, they began talking about Philip and to Philip. It was here that he finally made himself known by tapping on the table they were seated at. It quickly became his means of communication, two taps for no and one for yes. Here is a short video of the experiment. Come on, let's get going. Have you brought Dorothea with you? Have you seen Dorothea lately? No. No. Would you like to see Dorothea lately? No. No. Didn't you love Dorothea in your time? 
At some points, the taps are hard to hear, other times they are very audible. Later in the video, the table even seems to have been lifted by Philip while the group sings songs from his time. The film is about as clear as a video from the early 70s could be, but at a glance, you can't see anyone under the table or any strings that would be used to lift the table up. I'm not saying that this isn't the case, just that we can't see them in the video. Other claims are that of the lights being turned on and off, though I have not seen video of that. Now, while the group knew what the answers to their questions would be, they created him after all, Philip was said to create a personality for himself. Some taps on the table were louder than others, depending on his feelings on the question. Questions about his wife were often met with harsh, loud taps, while questions about Margot or drinking were met with light soft taps. Unfortunately, that seemed to be the limits of what Philip could do. That and lifting the table, of course. Some participants said that they heard Philip whisper in their ear, however, no voices were ever captured on tape. Other claims that were never verified include a mist forming over the table and the table itself, trapping some participants in corners of the room or, if they were to show up late, move the table in front of the door so they could not get it. All of this was claimed to have taken place by something that was created by a group of eight people. Allegedly. The seances soon began grabbing tons of media attention, and a documentary was even created about the entire process once the experiments were done. In the documentary, claims that Philip moved the entire table and those sitting at it across the room over to three spectators. Some say this footage is real, but I'm more inclined to believe it was a dramatization for the sake of the documentary. Still, the group was never able to achieve their final goal. Make Philip manifest. Make him actually show himself in the room. Once the study was over, many theories about the validity of it and possible explanations came forward. The main idea is that the group was simply participating in some kind of hoax. This, however, doesn't hold up very well as no one in the study really had anything to gain other than a few television interviews and a documentary. Along with this, a seance was held with an audience of over 50 people and from what I understand, there were no illusions at play or an act put on. Next would be the theory of a shared delusion. Induced delusional disorder seems to sound like what we're talking about. A quick definition of this disorder states, a dominant person initially forms a delusional belief during a psychotic episode and imposes it on another person or persons with the assumption that the secondary person might not have become deluded if left to his or her own devices. While this does sound similar to what we're speaking of, the Philip experiments were much different. Instead of one person coming to another and explaining a delusion, a group came together and created a delusion. Still, the science is there. Finally, there is the conclusion that the experiment was a success. It could be that the group was able to conjure up a man named Philip Aylesford from the 1600s just from their sheer willpower and concentration. Other instances of this experiment seem to back this up. Once the original experiment was disbanded, others took place under very similar conditions. One of the most notable instances is the Skippy experiment that took place in Sydney, Australia. Skippy Cartman was their subject. 
She was a 14-year-old girl who had her life taken by her Catholic school teacher, Brother Monk, after some incredibly dark things took place between them. Skippy was buried in a shallow grave and discovered some time later. Brother Monk was never charged for his crime as he'd left Australia, never to be seen again. The group gathered and for six months received no results. It's said the results came only when the group changed the table that they were using. They opted for one with three legs rather than four. With this, Skippy seemed to begin communicating with them in the same way Philip did, tapping on the table and messing with the lights. Unlike the Philip experiment though, this study had no physical evidence in the way of video or audio. There were claims that the group planned to get back together and film the entire process in 2007, but as of now, there has been no more mention of it. Is it because the experiment was never an actual success, or has everyone lost interest? So now I pose the question to you all. Do you believe what took place during the Philip experiment was real? Did this group really manifest this man into existence in some form? Or was it simply a well-crafted hoax? The other experiments, like that of Skippy, were they hoaxes as well? I would really love to hear your take on this and get a discussion started. Personally, I want to believe it's true, simply because the thought, pun intended again, of it is incredibly fascinating. But still, it is hard to believe. I want to take a quick second to just say thank you to everyone for sitting down and watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I know it was a little bit different than what we do here, but this is one that I've really wanted to talk about for a while, and I hope you all find it as interesting as I did. I also want to take a quick second to thank all of the channel members and $10 patrons. Everyone you see on screen now is supporting the channel monthly, and I could not thank them enough. If you want to get videos early, get some behind the scenes things, uh, access to scripts before the video is even recorded and maybe an occasional blooper reel, I don't know, you know, stuff like that. Head over to Patreon and pledge and you get all that good stuff. And you can also become a channel member if you don't want to head over to Patreon. Just click that little join button under the video. As for everyone else, I appreciate you all just the same. And remember, please leave some comments down below and let's get this discussion going. I really want to hear what you all think about the Philip experiment. Uh, the Skippy experiment, the idea of tulpas, everything we covered today. I want to hear what you all think. And as always, stay safe out there.